We're now at a point where we can run a ChatGPT-like thing on our MacBook using the Apple Silicon GPU, which makes everything run faster. And we don't have to configure that or go through all the setup that we used to go through. It's much, much easier now. And you can even have your own GPTs, kind of like GPTs that ChatGPT has on your own machine. And it looks way better than uh, at least the mess that I made last week. Hey, that was a beautiful prompt, okay? If you missed that video, I'll link to it down below. It didn't look very good. Today, it's gonna look good and we're gonna get a ton of functionality and it's gonna be fast. Let's do it. Now, there's a couple of ways of going about this. I wanna show you the details that go into it because this, you know, we're software developers. We wanna know what's going on behind the scenes. Plus, this has the added advantage of showing you the code so you can actually take a look under the hood because I think it's really cool. This is what we're using right here. It's called Open Web UI. We're gonna set up Olama and then we're gonna set up this on top of it. The first thing you're gonna do is clone this repository. Now look, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step. -step. I'm assuming that you already know how to clone a Git repository, but I will not assume that you have a local node environment or a Python environment set up. For those videos, I'll link to those down below in case you need a refresher. I'm gonna clone this repository. Let's go git clone, boom. And here it is. We're gonna go into that directory and let's have a peek at the code. This has everything. This has the front end written in JavaScript. It's actually written in uh, Svelte. Here, go to package.json. So this will run on Node and this is the front end. We're using Vite and we're using SvelteKit. And this is like all the modern stuff, the modern tech stack stuff. The back end is a Python back end. So that's gonna be in the back end folder. You can take a look at the Python side of things. And this also has Docker configurations. So yes, you can run this through Docker, but first I'm gonna show you how to do this the regular way without Docker. We're gonna kick things off with Olama. Go to olama.com and download it. But you're gonna be like, what the heck is Olama and why should I download it? And why should I run things you tell me? This is the internet, you might be doing bad things to me. So Olama is like uh, an agent that runs on your machine that automatically manages downloading LLM models. You can go to models here, and these are the models that are available. These are open source models. You got Llama 3, you got Gemma, you got Mixtral, Code Gemma, all these models that are available. And this is an open source project, so you can go to the GitHub page and check out this code too, but we don't need to do that. All we need to do is download this tool. So we're gonna go to the homepage, click on download Mac OS. This is available for Linux or Windows, but you are gonna get the Mac OS version because this is a Mac OS tutorial. I'm doing this on Mac OS, Apple Silicon. Let's go, boom. In your downloads folder, you're gonna get this file, double click on it, it's going to extract Olama, which you can then drag to your applications folder. Boom. In applications, find Olama and run it. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure. This is gonna have a little cute llama in your menu bar and it's running. You can tell that it's running by going to localhost, 11434 is the port, boom. And it says Olama is running. So how do you use this thing? Well, if you go back to the command line, now you can say Olama version. It says Olama version is that version right there. Whatever version you might have when you're watching this. Now you can use the Olama CLI to fetch models and you can get the model names on the website under models. Llama 3, for example, let's do that. So I'm gonna say Olama pull Llama 3. Boom, it goes out, it gets the file. It's 4.7 gigabytes, I've already downloaded it before, so it took me absolutely no time at all, but it might take you a few minutes. If I want another one, like Llama 2, boom. I also had that one. Let's get one that I didn't have, 5.3. It doesn't matter to you. I'm gonna speed up that video. I'm not gonna make you watch it, but I just wanna see how long it takes. This one is small, it's 2.3 gigabytes, and it says it's gonna take like 25 seconds to download. What's up with the, all these different models? Well, they have different capabilities. They're trained differently. Llama is from Facebook, Meta. 5.3 is from Microsoft. And Gemma is from Google. Mixtral is from Mistral. All of these companies spend millions of dollars training these models so that you can get them for free and run them locally on your own machine. And you're gonna have to play around to see what gives you the best results for your use cases. All right, I got three of these models. What do we do next with this? Well, we can run it. Olama run, uh, let's go with 5.3. What this will do is create a prompt so you can interact with the model right there. Hi, boom, look how fast that is, that's insane. How can I assist you today? But I want you to see something here. I'm gonna open up my activity monitor. I have 64 gigs of RAM on this thing, so the number of models I'll be able to run should fit within that 64 gigabytes. Actually, it's, it's a little less than that, it's about 75% of that. Earlier I made a video as to why it's less, but we won't get into that here. I wanna open up 
the GPU history here and have that little window open so we can take a look at what's happening. Because this is not running on the CPU, it's running on the GPU. Completely transparent to us. Write me a 1000 word essay on JavaScript. Boom. And there it goes. It starts writing that essay. It's really fast. It's crazy fast. It's probably going to be done before we see anything here. Oh, we do see stuff. It's done with the, with the writing, but at least it gave us a little bit of a blue mark right there. You can see that the GPU usage, this is the Apple Silicon GPU, by the way, was almost fully utilized for that moment. It was generating that text and we didn't have to configure anything like we did previously. To exit this, I'm going to say bye because now we need a front end, a pretty UI that looks like ChatGPT. Let's go back to our open web UI project and I'm going to pop over open the terminal here in Visual Studio Code. Control backtick will do that for me. I have Conda installed. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link a video. Conda lets you set up Python environments where you can run Python code and projects. So that's what I have here. And it says base because that's the base. I'm not in any active Conda environment, but I will create a new one. Conda create dash dash name. And I'm going to call this one open web UI. And I want to use Python equals dot 311. If you follow my steps right there, you'll be fine. But if you want to know more details, you can watch that other video. And now we're going to just use this command to activate that environment. Conda activate open web UI. So copy that line, paste it. And now instead of base, we have open web UI here. So now we're inside that Python environment that has Python version 311. If we say Python version, 311. There we go. Now we can go to the back end folder and, and mistype all kinds of stuff before we get to the point. So I'm going to do pip install dash r requirements. This has a bunch of requirements that we need to install. I'm going to give it the dash u flag for upgrade. And if we take a look at what that is, in the back end folder, we have the requirements.txt file. So it has all these requirements to run the back end. Wow. YouTube transcript API. I wonder if it can do it probably can. I'm not going to for, for another time. I'm, I'm getting distracted here. Pip install dash R requirements. This actually takes a couple minutes to do because there's so many requirements and they all have to be installed within this environment. What's nice about this environment setup is I don't have to mess up my Python installation with all these requirements that I might need only for this thing. That's why I like to use Conda. All right, we also have to run the front end environment, which is a node application. So while that's happening, I'm going to leave that alone. Oh, it's done. Okay, great. But if it was still working, I can go up here and say, I want to do another terminal. I'm going to use node and NPM. And for node, I also have an environment manager for that. I use NVM for that. Let's take a look at what version of node I'm working with here. I'm working with 18. I'm fine with that. You can use a more modern version of node. This is modern enough for this purpose. For node version management, I linked another video. You can check that out later or you can just follow my steps here. Just make sure you have node installed, okay? Just don't install it wrong. Please don't install node globally. You can if you want, but just don't. Let's move on. NPM I. What, what does NPM I do? For those of you that don't know, is going to look at package.json and install all the dependencies that are here. Basically, NPM I is short for NPM install. Once that's done, we're ready to build this. NPM run build, which is going to do this script right here. Cool. We got our front end. We got our back end. Let's go back to the back end terminal where we just installed all the Python requirements and we're going to run bash start dot sh that's in the back end folder. Boom. When you start it up and go to localhost port 8080, it takes you to auth automatically because this has authentication built in with a database. Really cool for you to look at that code, by the way. Check it out. And uh, you do need to sign up. It's not going to send your credentials anywhere. It's all stored on your machine. This is just for fun. Alex, let's go with my email. This can be a fake email, by the way, which is what I'm going to do right now. Create account. Boom. And now I'm signed in. And look at this beautiful interface. Um, I can start chatting, but I can't really uh, until I select a model. So if we go up here to select a model, you'll see all the models that we have installed. You can switch between them and you can even combine models. I'll show you that in a moment. So we've downloaded Llama 2. You saw me do that. Llama 3 and Phi 3. These two, I'll talk about that in a second where they came from. I can say, let's go with Phi 3 and maybe I want to mix in Llama 3 and let's do those two and I'll say hi to both of them. 
So it chose Llama 3 for some reason. It says, hello, it's nice to meet you. Is there something I can help you with? This is basically going to O Llama and then returning the result to the back end and then the front end. And that's how you interact with this. In the settings, you have the ability to select a theme, system prompt, advanced parameters. You can play around with that. Here's where you can have models and you can pull models directly from this user interface. So if, if you see another model you like, like Mistral, for example, you can type that in here and pull it down this way. Delete models that exist, all sorts of add-ons for the UI, image generation. By the way, I don't have a video for this yet, but if you wanna see an image generation video with Automatic 11.11 and how that integrates, let me know in the comments down below. I may just do that here, or maybe a members only video. If you're a member, thank you so much for being a member. If you wanna join, the channel and support the channel. I make special videos just for members as well as these videos. But don't worry, I'll also make more tutorials and things like that for the main channel as well. If you subscribe, that's completely free. That's your cue to subscribe. And if you like it, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up so I know. All right, what do we got here? Chats, imports, exports, account. This is your user management. If you click on user, you can sign in, sign out, archive chats, playground. With a playground, that's a little bit different than chat. You can actually add your system prompt. You might not know this, but when you're using chat GPT, there's a system prompt that gets sent along with your prompt in addition to the context. Now here's a really cool thing prompts. This allows you to basically store your own prompts. If you like some prompts, you've created them, they work well for you, you can store them in here, you can import them, you can export them, and you can use community prompts. So there's a whole community that shares their prompts that you can access through this UI. It's not working right now. Maybe when you try it, it'll work. But what I did try was this right here. If you go to model files, you have made by open web UI community. This is basically like GPTs in chat GPT, where people put together their own little models, but it's more than just GPTs. GPTs is basically you provide a context, you provide some sample prompting, but here people can actually add their own models to it. So for example, Code Companion. This gives you the uh, model file content. So it gives you a system prompt. It gives you some parameters to start with. When you install this, it loads it up, icon and everything. See this model tag name? This will actually grab the model that's associated, that's been fine tuned. Uh, I'm guessing it's been fine tuned. If you know any better, let me know in the comments by this person that created this thing. So if you go to save and create, it's going to pull the manifest, download any associated models, which may be large. See that pull progress right there? It's gonna take a little bit of time because this thing is pulling down two pretty large files. I think these are two 16 billion parameter models that it's pulling down related to code generation specifically. So I'm gonna have some coffee. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm out of coffee. I'm gonna have to sit here and wait. We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. We got Code Companion. So now when I go to new chat, I can select that Code Companion model. Write me some code. I know, super descriptive, but you're probably sick of seeing all the examples. Let's see what it comes up with when just prompted like that. Oh, it chose Go. And there we go. Get it? I'm sure it can write some code, beautiful code, but this is not a video about that. We're all set up, folks, but there's one more thing, and I told you about Docker. Now, I do have Docker installed. We can go to Docker Desktop, Products, Docker Desktop, Download for Mac, make sure it's the Mac Apple chip version, if that's in fact what you have. Run Docker Desktop, and again, I have entire development setup videos. I'll link to one of those down below, how I set up my development environment on Mac. That includes Docker. Once Docker is up and running, it's really easy peasy. All you gotta do is go right here, open Web UI com and you want to go to the docs and getting started in fact this is way easier than the steps that i showed you but i wanted to show you the details so that you know what goes on behind the scenes because for developers that's a little bit more important i think than just having the thing run because that gives you extra knowledge and extra power when you're looking at this code and you have the project everything is here it's a beautiful thing including the docker configuration docker compose there's a docker file right there it tells you everything that's being pulled what ports are being mapped what drives are being mapped and so on but i will give you one single command to run you can skip all this stuff right here and run this command right here 
it's right under this headline in the documentation and I will actually copy and paste this and put it in the description. Now you know how to run this web UI, which is very good looking. It's so easy. There is another way to run local LLMs if you don't want to be limited by the models that Olama provides. And I made a video for that too, right over here. Check that out and I'll see you in the next one.